أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين قدم من شاء بفضله وأخر من شاء بعدله لا يعترض عليه ذو عقل بعقله ولا يسأله مخلوق عن علة فعله هو الكريم الوهاب منشئ السحاب ومسبب الأسباب ومنزل الكتاب وخالق الناس من تراب نحمده سبحانه ونستعين به ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله أرسله الله رحمة للعالمين فشرح به الصدور وأنار به العقول وفتح به أعينا عميا وعذانا صما وقلوبا غلفا جاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين وتركنا على المحجة البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها إلا هالك اللهم صل على هذا الرسول الكريم وزد وبارك عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وأحبابه وأتباعه وعلى كل من استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه وقتفى أثره إلى يوم الدين ما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله عز وجل وأحسن الهدي هدي سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشار الأمور محدثاتها, محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة ألا وكل ضلالة في النار بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse in surah, at the end of surah al-hash O you have attained to the faith of Allah, to the call of faith Have taqwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And watch out for what you have prepared for tomorrow Day of judgment or the hereafter And have taqwa from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most acquainted with everything you do Amma ba'd Ikhwani al-fudala wa akhawati al-fudlayat طبتم جميعا وطاب ممشاكم وتبوأت من الجنة منزلا وأسأل الله العلي القدير الذي جمعنا في هذه الساعة المباركة على محبته وطاعته أن يجمعنا مع سيد النبيين في جنته ودار كرامته إنه لي ذلك ومولاه وجس من الدعاة والله سبحانه وتعالى هو gathered us in this blessed hour of جمعة to gather all of us again إن شاء الله with Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم من زرعة الجنة آمين أما بعد دايس خطبة very short concise, focused خير الكلام ما قل ودل the best of speech is short to the point and إن شاء الله have a useful, beneficial practical message the purpose is not to stand up and lecture you or لا the whole purpose of this خطبة and every خطبة is actually how all of us together, you and I, move together as one solid wall in a, way, in a path that is effective, fruitful, matters, and all according to the nur of the Sharia, or the nur of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed for us through the Quran and through the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So remember this just to start with. We leave this door today, we leave today, inshallah, all as one body. يقول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم After starting with the ayah, now we'll do the hadith. قال مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراحمهم كمثل الجسد الواحد إذا اشتك منه عضو تداع له سائر الأعضاء بالسهر والحمى In this hadith, it's sahih. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the likeness of the believers together, all of us together, like the likeness of one body, 
like a whole one body. When part, when one organ or one part of the body aches, the entire body aches. Imagine yourself, I'm not sure if you had this experience, but su suppose you had a pain in your tooth. So, like what it is really, you can't, does your eye say, it is not my shop, it is not my business, I will go to sleep. Or you stay awake all night until you see your dentist and do something about it. Just one tooth, one nerve. Get aches, you're in, you, don't, you don't sleep. Part of any part of your body is. It doesn't say that I'm an Arab, I'm not an Arab. I am from this, uh, I'm educated, not educated. I'm living this postcode that doesn't, don't live in that postcode. Doesn't matter. We should be one of the signs of Iman. Probably later in another series of khutbahs or durus, Allah Alam, we can talk about the 70 aspects of Iman. We all talk about the importance of Iman. Iman, Iman, the, the whole religion is Iman, Mal Islam, Mal Iman, Mal Ihsan, is Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. The three main ingredients of our religion go through the Islam, which is the physical acts of worship, the law, how we buy, sell, marry, pray, make wudu, do hajj, all the physical aspects. Faith is all the heart aspects. What behind this physical world, what should be in your heart? That's Iman. So Islam is the physical, is the outside. Iman is your motives, your feelings, your everything behind this physical world. Ihsan is about how to make both at the most beautiful level. The highest quality level. So there is no Ihsan without Islam and Iman. And there is no Islam without Iman and no Iman without Islam. Wala Ihsan illa bi Iman. And no Ihsan without both. This is at a very high level quick. You should know how you see your religion. How you see who you are. Your identity. Khalas. Now Iman as being that one wing of the bird. You cannot fly, you are nothing without, without well, we are nothing without any of the Islam or Iman. What is Iman? When Allah says, وَكَانَ حَقًّا عَلَيْنَا نَصْرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ It's incumbent, Surah Al-Ruh. When incumbent, it is incumbent on us to give victory to believers. That's a promise of Allah, صح? Correct? Allah promises that. And Allah says another, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُدَافِعُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah indeed, indeed, see, emphasis, defends and protects those who believe. Now I get questions, all of you get questions, from your children, from your colleagues, from, where is that promise? Is there a doubt on the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or is it, inna Allah la yukhlifu al-mi'ad, Allah never fail his promises, that, of course, Allah la yukhlif al So where is that victory? Taban, you would guess that my khutbah is about what's happening in Gaza, in Palestine, in, right? I cannot turn the blind eye, I cannot just hear and just talk about something else. It has to be relevant to what's happening and all what all of us go through. It affects everyone, the whole body, it should be one body. Right? but. I don't want you to say to stand and say, oh, you should do this and now what's happening? You hear that in the news, you and then what happens after that khutbah? Nothing. It's just emotional talk, reactive reaction. And I'm not sure if you may agree with me that are we sick of reactions? We're just being reactive. Things happen, we rise with it, and then we go back to the same bad old habits that led and caused the, that issues to happen in the first place. We go to the city, we make demonstrations, and I'm not saying not to do it or do it. I mean, this is another topic. But then, but is it, are we just being, being reactive? And if nothing changes, nothing changes. We're just being reactive, but then everyone go back to the old haram, mixing and even in these demonstrations. A lot, yeah, anyway. Fa, we need to really, so this khutbah might be a bit deep. 
coming from work and going back to work, or maybe really taking your mind and mentally into really high RPM, really yeah, and strong drive. But yeah, bear with me, inshallah, it will be short. When will be when will stop reacting to changes and instead we create them? You look at the Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, even when he's in early stages in Mecca, the Prophet, your Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, has never been reactive. Even in his, I'm not saying his weakest, because Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has never been weak. Never ever has been weak. From there on, he has been the strongest ever. But what he, he might have lacked resources, numbers, wealth, yeah, that's not, but that he, he, we were never weak. We always created changes, not just responding to them. <coughs> responding to changes is a very yeah, I mean, temporary. The results, the fruit of it just goes away quickly and then gets worse. One of the, so the believers, we go back to the belief. Allah protects, in Allah Yudafa, Allah defends the believers. It's incumbent on us to give victory. Where is this? So the question is not in the promise of Allah. Where is the question? Where are the believers who deserve this? Right? And then when Allah sends tribulations for a reason to the believers, to start thinking, to wake up, to, re to tune their <coughs> direction, to come back to that track, to the right track. Right? So long as we do not understand the message, things will keep, will keep receiving tribulations. Talat and Qasura, long or short, it doesn't matter how long I have been in a tribulation. You can be for the, all the time in the world. Hardship, hardship, hardship. Or it can be moments, seconds, one day, half a day. It all depends on when I will start understand the message that Allah wants me and I change my track and start going the right track that Allah wants me to be there. You can realize, you can understand in minutes, you can say that in years. Stay bent and stay harsh in years until مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعْذَابِكُمْ إِنْ أَنْتُمْ آمَنْتُمْ وَشَكَرُ What would Allah benefit? Allah says in the Quran, Allah doesn't really want to give us hardship. What Allah will benefit if He see us in pain? Nothing. Allah, the first thing that Allah introduced Himself to us is what? Suppose you have an unmuslim friend interested in the Qur'an, so you open the Qur'an and you introduce the Qur'an and the deen to this friend who is interested in Islam, he wants to look at it. What is the first thing you see? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself introduces himself to us and them. Bismillah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman, Allah. And he said not the Rahman al-Qahar, Rahman and anything, he both, he said both the qualities and attributes and the sifat and the names, the two names of Rahim. So for sure Allah doesn't really want to give us hard time, Allah doesn't want to see us in pain. Everything that Allah does is Rahim. But do we really want that Rahim? Do we understand the mission? Then we change our course? You get your ship now sailing in the right direction according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Once you do that, comes. This is the introduction. The second khutbah, I'll talk about just one action item, inshallah. الحمد لله كما هدانا أن نحمد والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم. After this foundation principle, if we agree on this foundation so far, 
Based on this, now there is you and I here in Sydney for 2024, we can do few things that can really change, <coughs> both in the medium term and long term. There are other things that we can do at very short term, we can donate, make dua, it's all necessary. I'm not saying that this is all necessary. Try to make donations, choose a trusted people who can channel your donations to help with your dua and your sujood, etc. But there are things that are not that reactive straight away, but can be more effective, sustainable, in the medium term and short term. One of them is, because we have only one khutbah, one of them is what I started the hadith with. مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وطراحهم Not in the short term through dua and donation لا, I'll talk about again the long term and medium term the sustainable one the sustainable solution and here comes the ayah in the end of Surah Al-Zukhr so I'll take this ayah there are many but I'll take this ayah in Surah Al-Zukhr فيقول الحق سبحانه وتعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الأخلاء يومئذ بعضهم لبعض عدو الأخلاء الله says friends on days on particular times including the day of judgment are enemies to each other the friends your best friend could be even your family members enemies Tearing each other apart, ripping each other apart, stabbing each other apart from the back. Dividing, always dividing, dividing, dividing. And not just a peaceful division at times, sometimes it's very toxic. You may have seen that from family, close family members. Even. So even kind of, yeah, links of kinship, friendship, all didn't work, didn't help. Why is this? Let's go on with the air. Al Akhila Uyawma Idim Badum Li Badin Adu. So far it is very scary. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ill except. Once you see except, Alhamdulillah. There is a, a way out of, of this scary thought. Like Wal Asri in al insana la fi khus. Allah take voice, swears by Wal Asr, you are in loss. Every human, you and I, an insan fi khus, you are in deep loss. That's scary. Yeah, you read this ayah, you shiver. Well, I tremble. Alhamdulillah said, illa. Except. Illa ladina aman wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haq. Now I have a solution. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-akhillau yawma idhin ba'duhum li ba'din adu, illa al-muttaqin. Except to those of taqwa. So brothers, if we keep, if I keep giving 10 khutbas and 10 lectures about brotherhood and solid and being one body, guess what? It's not happening. Let us talk about how to be one body. How to be akhilla. How to be solid. Many years ago, I gave a khutbah about, that, about that, why the question was, or the topic of the khutbah, why لما يجتمع أهل الباطل ويفترق أهل الحق? Why the people on falsehood are uniting while the people of haq are dividing? We have the sunnah, we have the Quran, we have the sunnah, we have the deen, we have the akhlaq by far, we have all this, yet we are dividing. We are only solid against each other, we only have teeth and, and against each other. Asad alayya fi al-hurubi na'amatun fatkha'u tudburu min safir al-safiri. With among each other we are lions and tigers. But outside we are like chicken. Well, I guess your brother, your wife, your husband, you are a lion, mashallah, but you go to work, people cannot even pray Jum'ah in the workplace. A teacher came to me. I said, Sheikh, I'm really scared to pray Dhuhr in the school. Because the kids, what the kids may mock me or my teacher will say, or 
Oh, I'm scared to tell my boss I'm going to Juma. Allah, so cute, so soft. But with his wife and his kids and his friends and Muslims in the masjid again, is the, if the Imam goes five minutes beyond time, they will be attacked outside. Sheikh, we have a business, we have work. Why you are late? <laughs> MashaAllah, yani, lions among each other, but so we are chicken. Coming from the weaknesses inside. For why people of Haq divide while people of falsehood are united? And then I found six reasons, that's another topic. But related. Illa al So, brothers, I will finish now. Yeah, I wanted to be short. As a problem, I want to be short, straight to the point, and memorize it. Illa al Live every day to build yourself as a person who is worthy of being part of that body. So now instead of blaming your brother for, for stabbing you in the back, for betraying you, for failing you, for, 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 for. Yes, it is bad. You, we, I suffer, we suffer, I suffer that myself. I found it probably with people that I worked hard for before and I give my heart and my love. Yeah. But instead of just, let's look inside and first thing is be one yourself. Work in everything that makes you yourself a trustworthy person, reliable person, honest, integral, not self. Don't look, don't be a slave of money, of position, of materialistic gain. Be first a true brother that pleases Allah, that Allah looks at your heart and is happy with. Now you yourself is salah. Now yourself is eligible to be part of that circle. Two is now it will be you'll be like a magnet. And probably proactively look for the like your likes, the people who belong to that same species, the integral, the honest men, the true men, the knowledge, and then be with, spend your time with, choose carefully your friendship, your friends, choose carefully your company, choose carefully who you work with, who you collaborate with. Everyone is our brother. Everyone. Every Muslim is our brother. But not every Muslim is a friend. <coughs> not every person is in your ship. Imam al Ghazali talks about five types of people that you never take them. They are your brothers. You, you have rahma. You help them. You make dua for them. You support them. But not your friend. It's people you get out yourself. You bring them into your ship, they will dig a hole. We have a hadith in Sahih Bukhari. Rasulullah Sallallahu said, some people are, when you have these people in your ship, people took the upper deck, people took the lower deck, the people in the lower deck, they're very intellectually li limited. They said, we don't want to bother our brothers on the low upper deck by asking them for water. Let's dig a hole in the ship and get water from the river, or oh, yeah, straight away. What happens like, if they leave them, what will happen? The whole thing will sink. So, but be careful for example, this type of al-ahmaq, the fool, the one who's intellect, yeah, is, is not, he means good, but he harms you. It's one of them that you don't take with you in your ship. I wouldn't take them in my ship. I will have mercy on them, I will support them, I will love them, I will make dua for them. They will not be with me. Second is the haqood, the envious, the jealous, the envious. This person, unlike the, his worse than the fool, the fool loves good for you, but he will harm you unintentionally. This one, he means harm for you, and he will harm you. So this person, again, you exclude. <clears throat> Third one, the materialistic person. 
the one who's driven by all this dunya stuff. He doesn't know that dunya stuff truly, not just lip service, there to serve, but not a goal in itself. And that's why this person, on the first occasion, when he get a more materialistic, he will sell up. When he get the right price for you, he will sell you. Because to him, that's the goal. He's been so good. No, he hasn't been good. He just didn't get the right price to sell you, to throw you under the bus for. Dunya for you. And so on and so forth. But the whole purpose of the khutbah, you know, khalas, is don't, first thing is how do you know these people? So that you don't take them on board. You know what? One of the, there are a few ways. One of the most effective things that you can do is be you yourself, not to be one of them. Don't be a materialistic person. Don't be envious and jealous. Don't be a fool. Gain knowledge, gain wisdom. Al-mutakabbir, one of them. Don't be mutakabbir. Mutakabbir la yasma. To him, he's another Fir'aun. Fir'aun said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la. While many of us, every single occasion, they say, Ana ra'yukum al-a'la. Where is the mashura? Where is active listening? Where is taking feedback? With respect, with love. This is about the close group. You should have mashura with each other. With truly active listening, with true respect. It doesn't matter if you're a sheikh, you are a alim, you are... With your mashura, just actively listen. You take it with mercy and love, and you respond to that with equally mercy, love, and respect. Both ways. Then, my brothers, there is a hope that we can have even few men, وقليل من عبادي الشغل وكم من فئة قليلة غلبت فئة كثيرة بإذن الله Only then As Allah says in Surah Al-Baqarah وكم من فئة قليلة Even if you are few Even if you are handful But the impact, the power, the strength in these small handful people be beyond what you Because now they work with the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not their individual power ولا يغرنك طريق الهدى ولا يغرنك طريق الردى لكثرة الهالكين ولا يستوحشنك طريق الهدى لقلة السالكين لا يستوحشنك طريق الهدى on the path of huda don't feel alone even because there are only few people with you don't feel وحشة don't feel lonely don't feel alone وَلَا يَغُرَّنَّكَ طَرِيقُ الرَّدَى And don't be fooled by the path of destruction. لِكَثْرَةِ الْهَالِكِينَ Because there are lots of people on that path. I will finish with that. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفرين أستغفر الله اللهم صلي على سيدنا محمد وآل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم لا تدع لنا في هذا اليوم العظيم لنا إلا غفرته لا ميتا إلا رحمته ولا صدرا ضيقا إلا شرحته ولا عصيا إلا هديته ولا ظالما إلا قسمته ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا لك في علم وفي صلاح إلا استفتها وقضيتها يا رب العالمين اللهم وحد بين صفوف المسلمين وألف بين قلوب المؤمنين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه وتعالى مما يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنه أولئك الذين هداهم الله وأولئك هم أولي الألباب وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وآله الحمد لله رب العالمين